Hey, this is Danny. The channel is You and Me Living Free, and I want to kind of wrap up the whole DigiKey experience and talk about a few lessons that I have learned from doing that, and then also talk about what I'm looking at now so that I can hopefully continue this nomad life, but maybe in a, in a way that looks a little bit different than what I was sort of anticipating. So lessons learned and update. Hopefully I can do both in one video and not make it too, too long. So I will try to stick to the point. You know, sometimes I do meander, but uh, no. So anyway, stick with me. If, you, if you've if you been with me a while, you already know this and you uh, don't hold it against me. So let's do this. Okay. So to look at um, the lessons I learned from the DigiKey experience, I want to just go really briefly back and kind of set the stage because context is always important. Context uh, is everything, in, in fact. So I had this year off of work, right? I took it off. I, I spent my savings, I traveled, it was a dream come true, it was amazing. I decided to make it happen and I made it happen. No regrets, it was awesome. That was April to April. Well, before my year was up, I, um, I found that lump and I had a scare where I thought maybe I, had, I might have breast cancer, it turned out to be benign. And so I went through all of that rigmarole, and before I knew it, my April 4th year anniversary was up. And I felt like I was in a good place because I'd had all this time, I'd had this amazing journey, I have a wonderful YouTube channel, Patreon, all this, all the, all this travel that I had would have never dreamed I could do, I'd got to do. It, I was in an awesome place. And not only that, but I was very grateful and had this perspective on life, like, you know, my aspirations in that moment were like, I just want to continue to do what I'm doing. If I get to continue to travel and, um, and have some freedom and, uh, and continued down this path, that would be all I wanted. Like that would be the ultimate, right? And so immediately I started thinking of also at that point, you see all these things coming together. I've had my year, but I also went over budget on my year. And I've talked about that in previous videos. If you want to go back and look at some of those reasons why I was over budget or what, what happened and what to expect with this whole nomad life thing, which is the unexpected. That's what you expect, right? In regular life, you do that too. But as a nomad, I feel like it's amped up even more because there's so few things that we know for sure. Okay, so I'm in this big transitional period. I, it has kind of just hit me in the face like, oh, my year is up, I'm out of money, and I'm beyond the money that I wanted to spend, and now I better find something quick. I look to DigiKey, and they, took, they, sweep, they just gobbled me up. As soon as I called them and took a little assessment, they were like, yep, you, you, you rock, let's do this, and they were pulling me in. Well. It's a very, it's a very good thing to feel wanted and to feel like, okay, well, that was easy. That's, you know, obviously uh, something I'm supposed to do and look how, look how easy that was. And, and it seemed like the shortest uh, distance between A and B, which is, you know, continue to travel and have some freedom and be able to pay for it at the same time. I'll do this. Well, then um, some other things started happening as well. Number one, I have a friend who mentioned that her company was hiring for a marketing position that she thought I might be a good fit for. I wasn't even looking at like regular job, what I call a regular job, you know, like a regular nine to five kind of job. But she said the position is remote. It doesn't mean I could travel all over and be in a different place every week, but it would mean that I could travel for a couple of months at a time possibly and, uh, and have the stability where I have room for private uh, meetings and stuff like that, but also um, have the freedom where I could, I, I wouldn't have to be in one location. And so there was a little bit there and my mind just started to open to more possibility. Like, I wonder what else is out there. Number one, the job my friend told me about, I am super excited about that. I already, um, just jumping ahead to the update part, I already had one interview with them and, um, and I'm scheduled for another one. Um, but I'm trying not to get my hopes too high up because it would be awesome. But 
it started me thinking, this was before I even left for DigiKey, but after I had already given them the yes. And so it had just started me thinking, I wonder what else is out there for marketing jobs that are remote. And I started to uh, look and notice um, how many there were. But I still have this thing because, I don't know if you know it, but I've shared it before, but you know, you might not watch every single video <laughs> or memorize the ones that you watch. <laughs> so anyway, years and years ago, I was a marketing director and I worked for three different companies and then I did marketing consulting. And that was about, a, that was about 10 years altogether. I had a lot of great marketing experience in uh, business to business and then business to consumer uh, markets. So, had great marketing experience. But it was in the days of, um, of website, collateral material, um, uh, project management, things like that. The customer um, CRM software, the customer relationship management like, like Salesforce, and then constant contact and the email programs that, that were, were just getting started kind of way back when I was doing all this, right? So social media wasn't a thing, Facebook wasn't a thing, none of that. So I had, but I had a, always had a marketing brain, right? And then when the kids were younger and stuff, I did other jobs. I always consider myself kind of underemployed because I did things that didn't pay as well, but they fit in my life better. And so I and it, and enabled me to be a better mom and have work, some work-life balance and stuff really, which was so important at that point. Well, since then I have always had trouble kind of getting back to that level, not where I think I, I want to step into a marketing director position, of course, but I mean, even getting back in the marketing game, um, so I did a, I did an internship. Oh boy, this is getting into a long story, isn't it? I'll just keep going and then if I need to edit it out, I'll edit it out. I don't know if you guys are going to fall asleep or if you want to hear this. <laughs> Maybe fast forward if you're not <laughs> interested in the detail. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> what was I even saying? Oh, Danny. So, uh, I got out of, uh, of, of one position that I had been in for a while and I wanted to get back into marketing. So I, um, I did, um, I spent a year with a really amazing social marketer at a place called A Real Change. And the person I work with is called Sandy Krakowski, who was a huge influencer and a huge, uh, she had a lot of social media training and stuff at the time. She's a serial entrepreneur, so now she's doing other things. But at the time, that's what she was doing. And I basically had a paid internship where I got to work with her genius mind and be um, just soak everything up and I did all of her trainings and everything to train me in social media which still at the time this was still years ago so it was still more like uh, Facebook Twitter Instagram um, Facebook Twitter Instagram mostly what what she did so uh, so I got that training and I always kind of felt like I might get back into the marketing thing and then I didn't then I took life coach training and then I spent a couple years doing life coaching and that was amazing something I always thought I might go back to but the time hasn't been right anyway why did I tell you all of this because when DigiKey called I, I was in kind of this state of uncomfortable fear and I would have rather just had something that was a definite yes, even though I didn't think I would love it and all that. But I've gone through, even in the last video, a lot of reasons why this was going to be a positive experience for me, even though I know it wouldn't be the ultimate or anything great as far as loving the work every day, right? So DigiKey was something solid. And when I was in a place of having a lot of fear, I'm in transition, my year's up, my money's lower than I thought, this fear stuff was really speaking to me. And so I wanted to get that position and get there as quickly as I could. Now, another interesting thing. As I look back on this lesson, so a major lesson that I'm talking about here is the difference between being in acting from a place of fear and acting from a place of trust. Um, life is scary and there's not enough money versus 
it's all working out for me. Uh, follow your intuition and stay and trust and it and it's all working out and it's going to be fine and it is fine right now versus you better grab the first thing that you can and then if this something better does happen then at least you'll be you'll have a nice foundation you'll be able to jump over to it right like I thought oh, I can always leave this position and I will pursue other opportunities while I'm doing this position so that I can have the stability and the possibility right wrong because what happened was once I got to DigiKey my whole spirit just every day got more and more depleted my positivity left me my my sense of being centered and being grounded in the truth of who I am inside uh, was disappearing and the fact of the matter is it is this in all my transformational work that I have done I know that honestly, the ideal place to get to is, you know, the external world doesn't bother you that much because internally, you know, you have the spark of the divine within you, you have your answers within you, and you trust in this in guidance that you're getting and that things are working out for you and that you have intuition. And, uh, and that this is just part of a broader tapestry and it's unfolding and it's all going to be fine. Well, when I was in this situation and in the, in the actual physical space of being in physical pain, being in kind of the mental anguish and not liking it, just the drudgery, I developed this huge momentum that was just pulling me down so much and I just, and I felt trapped like I wasn't ready to quite give up on that. Like I'm still gonna do it, I'm still gonna persevere, I'm gonna whatever, you know, to come out of it, whatever those stories we tell ourselves. We tell ourselves, work hard and good things are bound to happen. Work hard and good things are bound to happen. But, but I think that that's almost a false narrative because if you are, if the working hard that you're doing is you're working really hard beating your head against a wall then where is that getting you you're like yeah but it hurts you're like yeah no just keep working hard it'll be okay and you're like yeah but I, i'm getting a wound now and and it was really starting to hurt and it's getting worse and worse no just work hard it'll be okay you'll you'll come out of it you, people who work hard are successful it's it's <laughs> it's just not true you know, i know people who work so hard, who work two jobs, who work three jobs. I, I was working three jobs at one point right after my divorce, right? Who work so hard, who do not get ahead and who do not have that joy and who do not get all those rewards because, because they're getting resentful and because they're getting negative and because they're letting maybe, not they, I'm not speaking for anyone else in their experience, but for me, when I'm in those situations is when I'm let, letting fear run the show. When I, when I start down that path, there's such a strong momentum around it that it, 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 it doesn't block me from my good, but it blocks me from recognizing my good. It blocks me from, it's like when, when I'm in that space of negativity, it's like I go from one of those people who thinks everything in life is a miracle to one of those people who thinks that left nothing in life is a miracle, right? The, those two ways of being, right? And, and it's like being around all that negativity and everything pulls me into that kind of way of thinking and it's so hard to get out of. And I did, and I got out of it and it was fine and everything is great and I had my interview, um, like I told you. And so I think that is the main uh, lesson from DigiKey is, that I can see now how I was letting fear pull me. And even now I don't call it a mistake. And even now I'm glad that I went and I'm glad that I had that entire experience and I'm glad that I left, but I'm also glad that I went there. Another thing it's showing me is how intuition was trying to help. When I was, when I was setting up the initial, uh, when will I come? When would you like to start all of that? the last start date that they had was the middle of May and they were doing training classes every two weeks. So the last start date they had was the middle of May and I said, well, that's my daughter's graduation. So I, I can't start then, but I'd really like to start 
the first week of June, that, you know, two weeks after that. And they said, well, there's no class scheduled for, for then. And I said, well, um, what do you think there will be a class scheduled? And there just isn't now. Cause we were still in, you know, mm, what February? No, we were in March. And so I said, you know, it's still a couple of months out and they were like, well, we really don't think we're, we're going to have a class in June is what they told me. So I was like, okay. And so I was like, okay. So the fear was talking when I said, yes, then I'll start and I'll work for a month. I'll come home for my daughter's graduation and then I'll go back for another couple of months. So that was the thing in my head. But going in, I wanted to start June 2nd. And if I had stuck to my guns, they had a class that started June 2nd. But I would have had to let go of the opportunity and say, no, I'm sorry then, it's not gonna work for me. I really don't wanna drive up, drive back. Um, I, I really wanna start June 2nd. In my mind, I was more talking myself into it, like you can go up, go ahead and make some money, um, blah, 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 you know, it'll be even more. And then you can quit sooner at the end of summer and you can have more time to go to Montana or do some of the things you wanna do. So I talked myself into it. But you see how if I had stuck to my guns, I could have started June 2nd. That might have changed things enough to where that experience either would have worked better for me or by then I would have uh, come to realize that there were more opportunities, come to realize that here, here's another big lesson. I need to work at my strengths. I need to do in this world, I need to do what no one but me can do. And we all have those things that no one but us can do, whether it's loving our, the children that we have or saying things in a certain way that people need to hear or want to hear or whatever that is, or drawing something that speaks to people or writing something or uh, working at a job where you're building a community or we all have these things inside us that want to come to fruition, that want to come forward. And for the last year in doing all that traveling, I knew I was very clear that was my path. I was very clear that was what I was supposed to be doing. And it was perfect. But I also took that year without the fear of survival and without the fear of not enough. I just I just decided I took it and, and that was that, right? I had plenty of other fears, but I was willing to conquer those fears. Because here's another thing about it is I'm okay with working hard. I will work harder than just about anyone. I will work my butt off, but I am only willing to work really hard on things that I am enjoying, on things that I deem worthwhile. If it's something I see as completely worthwhile, then I'm willing to to do what it takes. I'm willing to put that commitment forth. I'm willing to put in the time and to and to do what it takes. Part of it may not be comfortable or may not, not be what I wanna do, and part of it will be exciting and fun and, and what I love to do and would do without getting paid or whatever. But, um, but what I'm not willing to do is work hard in service of something that I hate that is only a means to an end. So so the difference here again is the whole fear and trust. It's because I, I have to work hard because life is hard and because this is what we do and because everybody hates Mondays and loves Fridays and lives for vacation and retirement versus if you love what you do, you'll never have to work a day in your life. But the thing is, everyone would be on this side if they could, but we all have for whatever reason, a number of fears, a number of a lot of different things that hold us back. Many, many, many different things that can hold us back. So let me see, what did I learn from DigiKey? The whole fear versus trust thing, the whole thing of my environment does matter, the people I'm around matter, the thoughts that I tell myself matter, the things I'm putting in matter. When I was at DigiKey and at my worst, it was like, I couldn't even do all the things I love to do and I wanted to do. I couldn't put together a YouTube video when I was there. I did a lot of recording, 
but I couldn't bring myself to put it together. That's why if you're one of my regulars, you were probably on the channel asking me like, where did you go? I, I went for two weeks without posting. And usually I post two to three times a week. So to go two full weeks without posting is like, I was so debilitated and so pulled down that I just couldn't see to do even the things I love to do. I couldn't find the energy or the enthusiasm or the motivation to even start them. And, uh, and that is tragic. That is like, whew, that is rough. And for anyone who is stuck in that, I am just sending you a ton of love and sending you um, just the, the, the crack, the sliver, the, the, the crack in that, in that wall, in that pot, in that cage that you feel like you're in, that, that sliver and that crack of maybe something else is possible. And how do you um, just kind of break it open a little bit, break open a little piece so that a little bit of the light shines in and you can see that something else is possible and take a step in that direction. Uh, because I feel like that's what we all do all the time. That's what we need to be doing kind of all the time. Um, so where I am right now updating, as I see that I have talked too long, but maybe I'll cut a lot of this out. We, we'll see. Where I am now is I am back in Kansas City. I am uh, being really flexible because now that I have started to send out some resumes and I am actively looking for a marketing job that is remote. I'm looking for a marketing job where I can use my talents and abilities, where I have different experiences and different talents and different, um, you know, things that other people don't have that I can bring to something. So, so another thing is just the fact that you know, there are things that we are uniquely qualified to do and we're going to make more money and be more successful the more we're doing those things that not everyone else can do. When I look at DigiKey, there's a lot of people that can do that job. There's a lot of people that can do that job better than me and, uh, and with more joy and everything than me because it's not the job itself. It was me in that job that didn't work. It wasn't the fault of them. It wasn't the fault of any of that, right? So... Um, so I want to be, be clear about that. People are still asking me, you know, for the number to DigiKey or, you know, that opportunity or whatever. It is, it is a wonderful opportunity for some people. It just isn't for me. And so I need to focus on what do I do best. And another thing is I've decided that I am going to look for a marketing job that is remote, that I can still kind of travel in one way or another. And I won't get too far down that road. We'll, we'll see what that looks like. But also... Um, I am going to start doing, uh, doing my own social media. Uh, I'm going to start with my Instagram, maybe with TikTok, maybe Twitter, I don't know. But I am going to go ahead and go down that road for me so that I gain experience and so that I have fun with it. And so I am more appealing to employers. Also, if it's not employee, you know, um, appealing to employers or if it's if I'm not meant to have a job then I'm going to build this so that maybe I can go into coaching again maybe I can build some kind of business for myself using these marketing talents and everything that I have so I'm just going to go forward with both of these with the searching and with the with the you know being my starting my own business plus doing uh, the job search thing and I'm going to move forward with possibility and with space and feeling so good and knowing that whatever is mine cannot be withheld from me. So life is always giving me what I need right now in this moment to grow or to go to the next step and level. So following intuition, following both of these paths feels really good to me. And so that's what I'm doing right now. That's what I'll be talking about. But I'm also going to, while I need to stay home and do some interviews and stuff, I'm going to do um, some short trips or some trips like up to a week or so uh, around this area where, are, where I have found a few places that I really want to go. I've been looking at my local area like, well, there's nowhere I really want to go around here. I'm not that excited about Kansas or anything. But there are some beautiful places in um, in Oklahoma, in Missouri, Arkansas, and around um, that really are very cool. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of that, 
and uh, with my eye on maybe a longer trip, we'll see. But I'm just taking everything a day or two at a time and it feels really good and I know it's all working for me. I know it's all working for you. And if you are in one of those positions where you can't see the light of day, then I hope you take this as a sign that um, it's out there, that it's possible, that we just, you know, keep trying, that we keep that we keep looking inside and asking ourselves why are we really stuck? Because usually the reason we're doing things isn't always the reason we think we're doing things. And sometimes fear is really running the show when maybe we don't want it to be, or maybe there's something that we can do that would bring us the feeling of security that we need and then enable us with that feeling of security to go and spread our wings and and fly a little bit and try something and have and have that risk um, because that is what is what is interesting for me because I know myself I love security and um, I'm a Taurus I'm very uh, grounded in the earth right I'm very I love security I love uh, comfort. And at the same time, I have this huge need for adventure and expansion. I'm always learning something. I'm always growing. I'm always uh, being a better me tomorrow than I was the day before or today than I was yesterday. And that is what drives me. And I have a real passion for that. And I, and I love that and enthusiasm for that. And I, I feel excited about life when I'm in pursuit of something that speaks to my soul. So that's what I'm doing now is I'm pursuing the things that speak to my soul and just finding so much joy in that. And so hoping and, and, and hoping, having faith that... Uh, that will lead me to something great. That will lead me to where I'm supposed to be. That leads me to to the next step. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> or I could or I could fail and be or I could you know fall on my face and be a miserable failure, <laughs> which is always a which is always a risk, right? Whatever. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. It, you know, we get one shot at this life, so I am, I, by golly, I'm going to live it and, and I'm going to get all the good that I can out of it and I am going to uh, risk, risk, and not always go for the safe bet, which is what I did with DigiKey and that was okay and that was then and that's what I needed and now I'm ready for something else and something more. And it's like also when you look at it, you know, the way that we were yesterday doesn't have to be the way that we are tomorrow. We can break our own mold. We can um, overcome our own fears. We can get beyond our own shortcomings and be better. But that's a process that is just like day by day by day by day by day. We just chip away at it and we try to stay positive and we keep things in focus and we just day by day by day chip away. And, uh, and that's what keeps us from living the same future. You know, a lot of people spend their whole lives taking their past and throwing it out into their future, remembering their past, knowing how things were, thinking in the present, that's how things are. That's just how the world works. That's just how things are. And then, so with them doing that, they just throw it out into the future and project that so that's what they're walking into. That becomes their reality. So I'm saying, even though I came from a background of, of that fear and of that uh, work hard and you'll, and you'll be rewarded, um, give your life to a company and then you can have some fun when you retire, uh, look forward to the weekends and the, and the vacations or whatever, even, even though there was a lot of that um, in my past, but even though there was so much of that, I can look at that and say, is that what I want to throw out into my future? No. Well, then what am I going to do about it? And how am I going to break this down? And what do I really believe? And is that true? And all of that stuff. And do I really believe, a couple things that we go through are, do I really believe that I deserve to have a, a, an awesome life? And if I do believe I deserve it, do I believe that I can have it? And uh, those are those are really big. And I, I feel like if you believe those two things, if you really, really firmly do, then then that is when things are possible. If you don't believe that they are possible, then they are then I'll tell you they are not possible. 
um, we have to start with kind of our belief and questioning those beliefs that don't work for us and stuff and, and looking at our fear, which is what I've tried to do here. And I, I hope this helps someone. And I, I did what I said I wasn't going to do and I got really long winded. Um, if you are still here, I want you to put a comment, <laughs> put something in the comments, like stay to the end. <laughs> like you want your medal because you deserve a medal for this one. This is, this is big. And I hope all my meandering had enough of a string through it that you could get an idea of what I'm trying to say. Um, and just know that I'm sending you a ton of love. And I, I thank you so much for hanging out with me and for spending this time with me. And um, I love this YouTube channel. I love my followers so much. And it, everybody who watches the videos and comments are, I'm, they're just filled with so much kindness and support and love. And I just love it. It's just one of the big bright spots. And so when I got to the point where I didn't even want to do these videos and I couldn't bring myself to do the editing and stuff, you know, you know something, you know something's wrong. Um, but I'm glad to be back and I'm glad you're here with me and thank you so much. And special thanks, of course, to all my patrons on Patreon. For So there's almost three bucks a month. You could be over there. I do give updates there in real time. So they've known for quite a while about the whole DigiKey situation and all that. And they got to see like pictures of my daughter's graduation and things. So it's just a little more behind the scenes. It's a little more in real time. Uh, so, you know, if you want to check that out, then, um, then please be my guest. And if you don't, that's fine too. And if you're just here, I'm just sending you a ton of love and, uh, and I'll catch you next time. Okay. Bye-bye.